Okay. So hey everybody, it's Christy, Joyful Art Studio, and I wanted to share how I wash my brushes because we talk about it a lot in my classes and um, everybody has them at home, the ones that are hard as a rock because we mostly use acrylic paint and so when acrylic paint is plastic, so when it dries, it's hard as a rock. But I do have a little trick that I use to, I can sometimes save these, but also after I have a workshop or a class, I have all these brushes that, um, you know, beginners use that don't necessarily know how to always properly mix and use a paintbrush with paint. So every few months I like to get all my brushes together from all my workshops and classes, both kids and adults, and give them a little spa treatment. So what you'll need is my favorite Murphy's oil soap for washing and then some little these are just my paint cups from my classes and so one of those I will rugby thinks this is super exciting say hi rugby can you say hi say hi everybody see I will put a little bit in here and this is kind of um, going to be their little massage bucket. And I will, another cup, get some water. I, I like to use um, kind of lukewarm water. Not cold, but definitely not hot. And the reason I don't want to use hot is because it will melt that glue that is in... I believe this is called the ferrule, but I can't remember. But so anyway, that part. So with, and I have another little cup with water and this one's just gonna get a little splash. This is for the ones that really don't need a good um, deep cleaning. And then just some paper towels to lay them all out on. I'm gonna do that over here in my messy little kitchen. So anyway, so let's see, where are those crunchy ones? Let's start with those bad guys. This brush has been pretty abused. He actually could use some glue down his ferrule, but. So, he's pretty stiff as you can see. So I'm gonna take him in there and I'm going to, can you see that? Kind of massage him back and forth, give a good rub with my fingers and those bristles and then pop it back in there. Where's that? I oh, know I had one more. Anyway. So all of these guys, these are okay. So I might get my fingers with a little bit of this soap and give them a little massage. And the reason that they get more, even more um, used in class is partly because of the way beginners mix paint. So if you have a paint palette, the best way So if you have some paint here, when you're getting some paint for your, to paint right onto your canvas. The best thing to do, I always try to tell people, is just loading it up, the tip. So, see that? I only have paint on the tip of my brush. I don't have it all the way down the barrel. When it gets filled up down into here is because they've got a lot of paint and we're scooping and mixing. And really, paint brushes aren't meant for a lot of paint mixing. They're, you can use them. They have palette knives and those are great for mixing paint. They actually work better than your brush. And then you don't lose any paint because it's not stuck up in your bristles. This one is a nice little one. It's just a handled wooden one. But I also have lots of these plastic ones that I bring to class and they work just as well. So, you know, a 50 cent 
dollar palette knife is a great investment just especially teaching your kids to mix with that instead of their paintbrushes will help them last because as we know paintbrushes even the inexpensive ones they're not cheap so when you are going through them so quickly because they are getting you know what i call i tell the kids i call it a bad hair day so this one's starting he's starting to get a bad hair day it's from kids that will push on it we always want to be gentle and light and soft and believe me i even see adults that do that with their paint brushes as well so anyway just my little tip so i have got this one soaking and he will probably soak for a little while he's already getting see that to where i can move some of those bristles apart and i'm going to keep doing that while i work on the others i can get some of that paint out pop him back in and then these were my ones that didn't need a good deep cleaning so what i will do and this is that bad hair day one see him so I have a little tip that will help extend his life a little bit, hopefully, often. So I'll rinse them out really well, back and forth, back and forth, rinsing with the water, kind of work that out, making sure I get all that soap out. And then once I've shaken out the water, I will take them and kind of reform them. See that? And then I will make him a nice tip and often just by drying in that position and then I store them in little cans like this so that their tips are always up in the air and then just laying them all flat I kind of lay them lay them with what size they are so that they're easy to put away and just keep going with my little paintbrush spa party so anyway just a little tip from me and hopefully that will help you extend the life of your paintbrushes. See you later, guys.